Okay, welcome to the unit. We're going to go through these disassembling and reassembling a Honda horizontal shaft motor. It's a stationary motor. These are great horizontal shaft ones for water pumps, generators, go-karts, that sort of thing. They have an inbuilt clutch in them. Um, really, really great piece of kit. Ignore that big blue ugly thing behind it. That is actually for that car. Oh, there. So, what tools are we going to need? Spark plug socket. We're going to use 3 8 drive tools. This is a ratchet, various size extensions, small screwdriver, feeler gauges for measuring end gaps, 10 and 12 mil socket, 10 and 14 mil ring open enders, a straight edge for doing your cam timing. Don't need to use a speed base, I always do. Side cutters for cutting the um, cable tie off when you tie the clutch all together when you finish working on it. Engineer's hammer, not to hit the piston or anything like that, but we're going to use the wooden end to drive it in. And of course, a um, nylon hammer to sort of bang around the place, particularly getting the clutch off, which is why I've got this large bit of steel here with the washer so I can just knock the clutch out. Of course, you don't do anything without sandwich bags. Bag and tag is the most important thing of all. We are also going to use an oil can, putting the parts back in, a piece of cardboard, thin cardboard, that's you could use uh, cocoa pops or whatever, that's just um, off a spark plug box. Great for setting up the gap on your coil to get a nice healthy spark. Pad and pen, um, that's for drawing a map for wiring and all that sort of stuff because Though it's a simple engine, it can be quite confusing. So, let's make a start. The first thing you'll notice on these motors is a lot of the bolts and nuts look exactly the same. For the purpose of reference, that is a bolt and this is a nut. Everything on this engine is right hand thread. In other words, we tighten going to the right or clockwise, untighten going to the left or anti clockwise. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Now, You'll see a lot of mechanics, and I'm one of them, putting a spanner on and cracking it with your hand. That is a no-no. You can give yourself an injury on your hand, you can deaden nerves and do all sorts of damage. The best way to undo something is to put the correct spanner on, hold it down with one hand and lift off, like that. And as you take these articles off, the best thing to use is a socket. You can just unturn them like that. One of the problems, or what you want to get into doing, the correct practice is to keep the axes of the the center axes of the extension parallel to the fastener and as you lift apply downward pressure now I like to undo things as close as I can to where they are and that way there's less chance that it's going to swing up and round the head of the bowler a lot of these don't use a particular high grade of steel and they will round off the next thing is you must always use the correct size spanner this is 10 millimeters it says it there and it fits onto that bolt nice and snug, snugly. If it has a fractional value on it, like 3 8 or 7 16 do not use it for this motor. This is all metric. Now when we talk about bolts, a lot of people would think that is a 10mm bolt because a 10mm spanner fits onto it. It's actually a 6mm bolt. Bolts are always referred to by the thread diameter, which is 6mm in this case. This is a 6 by 1.0, and 1.0 refers to the, the peaks of the thread, the distance between the peaks of the thread. Different types of bolts have a different way of reading the thread, and they're measured in an inch. It's called TPI, threads per inch. So I've taken most of our fasteners or bolts out, but we want to take this off. This is the starter assembly in here, and it also has a kill switch on it. So we need to undo this little clip here. We do not want to break anything, we're undoing things, we're not breaking them, so you must take your time. Now this can be quite confusing. There's a bunch of wires with a bunch of bullet type terminals on them, and you need to make sure that you get them in the right way. So, what we basically want to do is take a diagram. It's always a good idea to take a diagram. Get a piece of paper and start drawing. So I can pull this apart now and use this diagram to put it back together later. And there we have it. We have a cooling fan. This is an air-cooled motor and there's a lot of shrouding around here to direct the air into the motor. We have the pull start um, catch and we also have a stationary magnet that's mounted on this flywheel. And and if you run a stationary magnet past the coil of wire, it induces an electric current, and that's what we get. What that's what we use to fire the spark plug. Again, we bag and tag. Four bolts hold that on. 
put them in, zip up your sandwich bag so we know that those fasteners go with this item. Always make sure again we're using the right size tools for the job. This is 12 millimeters. We'll take this muffler off. And again, we store the fasteners with the article, which is this. And you'll see there's gaskets on here. These are a sort of a graphite type gasket. They're capable of a lot of, or a very high temperature, running temperature. And we'll put those in a bag, store them with the muffler. Now this next bit can be quite tricky. There's a clutch in here, a centrifugal clutch in here, that's chain driven to this, um, to this horizontal shaft. Let's start pulling this apart now. Now whenever you undo something like this, it's best to undo it in a circular motion. So, for example, I'll use a smaller, we'll use a smaller socket, undo this side, then this, then this, and you go around in that circular motion. And the reason you're doing that is so that you're not putting any pressure on the surfaces as you undo them. And again, as you tighten up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You do it like that. So as a, as a, in a circular, so you, you, you sort of bring it in level as you do it. You don't just tighten this thing, go over here. The other thing, when you put these together, you must always just do them finger tight first so you know the gasket's located in the right spot. So let's take these out. And again, we bag and tag. Now we're fortunate with these motors because these are all the same length. <clears throat> now quite often these stick, these gaskets can have a, a sort of a self-adhesive nature to them and they, and, they, and they sort of stick in really hard and hard to get off. Under no circumstances do you get a screwdriver in here and lever it. These two surfaces here are machined and if you start doing this sort of stuff, it damages the casing and we start getting oil leaks. So what we need to do is we need to just gently prise it off, like that. Seal's brand new, when we reassemble it, I'll show you how to put that in, um, or how to prevent that from getting damaged. And you'll also notice on this gasket, or in here, there are two locating dowels. These must be stored with your bolts, because if you lose those, the cover won't fit on in exactly the right spot, and you run the risk of putting this incorrectly and oil spewing out the seal because that shaft won't be dead centered in there. Now as you can see we have a centrifugal wet clutch. There's a chain drive here from the motor. I don't know if you can see from where you are. Can we see that in there? And we have all these little fingers. Now as this spins, rotational or centrifugal force pushes these weights out right against the side like a washing machine when you pull the lid up on a, a top loading washing machine you see all the clothes squashed around the outside of the tub that's centrifugal force in place so it's all pushed out from the center axis of what, what it is that's turning so in this case they're all going to push out to the side and then push down on there and clamp the clutch together so we'll take that off and i'll show you what i'm talking about You have to be very careful with this because there's a lot of parts in here and again we have to bag and tag them. No one's touching anything on these motors without bagging and tagging. Now if I take that off, here's our friction material here. Now this is a lot like a motorbike clutch. We have our friction material, we have our clutch plate. And it's multi-plate. Like this. Now, automatic transmissions in cars use these sorts of clutches as well and they always be kept in order. It's best if we don't pull these apart. I'm showing you by I'm pulling it apart to sort of show you what's inside, but we don't need to pull those apart. I'm going to take that off. That's the clutch hub. And you must not forget about this little guy here. That's called a Woodruff key. And that fits in here and locks it against the slot in the, in the crankshaft so it can't rotate independently. It's sort of locked on there. Get this one off now. 
Now behind this gear here, or this sprocket here, is another bearing similar to that that's pressed into the casing of the motor. Now I haven't got the right tool to get that off, so I'm just going to use a bit of this, a bit of steel, with a washer and use it as a sort of a slide hammer. And so I'll just stick it in like that. I should have somebody to help me do this actually. Maybe we'll have to use a hammer to knock it out. Tighten that up. And then it just slides off. Just like that. Now, that thrust washer you just saw then, make sure you remember where it goes. It has a machine side and a step side, so we have to make jolly sure we stick it in the right way. Not a bad idea to wrap bits like this up. This is machined and it's very, very clean. Not a bad idea to put that in a bit of newspaper before we bag it, just to keep that surface machined the way it should be. Now there are five bolts holding this casing on and they're all 12 millimeter head so let's take it off and see what lies underneath. And be very careful because here is a really really fragile sort of gasket and has a sort of an o-ring built into it so we need to make sure that's safeguarded and well looked after. Now we're in a position where we're going to start taking off some of this shrouding and electrical business so I'm going to start by taking this off just to get it out of the way. Now on the motors that the students use or that you use this will all be complete with the carburetor um, and so on and so forth and that also has to be taken off but we haven't got it connected to this motor at the moment we'll just set these aside Oops. there's also a crankcase ventilator this allows for air inside the motor that's pushed around by the piston going up and down and it sort of ventilates into where the air filter would be and that's just as a sort of an interference but it just sort of pushes in there And the reason I want to take that off is I want to show you this. Here's our coil. I don't know if we can see in there very well, but there's a tiny gap. It would probably be 20 thousandths of an inch. And we're talking metric, so what's that? 20 thousandths of an inch would be half a millimeter. So there's a tiny, tiny gap. Now when we take this off, or when we put it back on, we need to put it on with a little bit of cardboard between there press it up against there, tighten these two and then pull the cardboard out and that should give you, we'll get the right thickness cardboard, the right gap. And Mr. Platt and I have already had this apart so I know that that works. There we go. I'm not sort of working on this the way I normally would because I'm conscious that I have a sort of a camera looking at it. But before we pull this off fully, there's a little pigtail wire that goes off here, which is used for the kill switch. And using our screwdriver we can sort of push that grommet inward because we need that gone anyhow because behind there is a bolt. Now have a good look at how that's threaded through. It sort of runs along the outside of the casing then comes inside. When uh, I had a look at this motor before I made the mistake of running it in there and you can't do that because it's going to get caught up in all this sort of stuff. So you need to run on the outside and it's pinched between these castings here and that holds it in the right spot. So I'll just feed that through and then we can just take the rest of that out and we have our coil. 
and that's the thing that takes a tiny bit of voltage generated by a magnet running past this coil, the magnet mounted here, and then it's amplified inside there and gives you a nasty shock as it comes out there, but it needs to have a lot of voltage there to jump across the spark plug to ignite the fuel. So I'll just bag these parts before we go too much further. We also have a heat shroud. That's mounted underneath where the um, where the starter housing is. That directs heat onto these cooling fins from the fan as it spins. So there's one mounted under there and there's one underneath. And you need to be well, you need to be very vigilant that you get this one out before or we'll put this one in I should say before we put the clutch housing on because I made that mistake before. Whoops. That's fairly loose. Now the reality is these motors won't be running for a very long time. So they're probably not 100 percent necessary, but it's always good practice to put back what you take off. So there's the basic structure of the motor. We'll start going a little bit deeper. Let's take the top here off. Again, we're going diagonally. Even if you don't have to, it is good practice to get into because you'll end up doing it subconsciously and it might even save you from ruining a part later on. And again, and I can't say it enough. Bag and tag. Now be very careful when you take that off. It's got a very thin cork gasket. We want to stick that in the bag right now so we don't lose any of those parts. That leaves us with these little guys here. These are your rockers. We have push rods coming up from a camshaft inside, which open and close valves to let fuel in and exhaust out. Now really, really easy to hurt yourself with these. We have the nut here, which determines how far down the thread this sits to give us the right amount of free play. There, we can see it. And this nut here on the top locks against that to stop that rotating. Now, it's very easy to flick off. Now these castings are sharp and you don't want to hurt, hurt yourself because you'll get a nasty cut from it. The easiest way is to put one over in a comfortable position and just squeeze together. And you'll find then it's perfectly safe to withdraw. And there we have it. There's our lock nut. We can use a socket or a spanner here. The socket might be better actually, but... And again, we're bagging and tagging. That's quite a long thread, that one. You'll see there's your thread. There's your rocker arm. And this little guy down here, whoops, is your push rod. Right, we're at the stage now we're going to take the cylinder head off and again, as we said before, we want to take it off diagonally, so... Go crisscross. The most important thing is you just take your time. Head gaskets there, again we have a locating, or a couple of locating dowels here, and we need to bag those, and also there's our head gasket there. And we can't reuse that because it's already sort of started coming apart over here, so we have to replace that. Head gaskets are strictly used only once. Now on the piston, there's an arrow. And the arrow always points to the front of the engine, so it's always worth remembering that this arrow here is going to point to this chamber here, just for the purpose of reference. On a car engine, such as this one, the pistons, all down here, there's four on this side, four on the other, all have their arrows pointing toward the front. Now, there's a filler, a filler plug here, and there's a dipstick here. 
There was also a dipstick, if you remember, on the clutch housing, which was up here. There's two levels of oil. Now, the clutch obviously has to have more oil in it because it's higher up. The engine, on the other hand, only has to have oil sort of down at this level here. So that's the reason that we have two dipsticks and they're at different levels. Having said that, they both use 30 weight engine oil. Again, when we take these parts off, we bag them. Whoops. And when we undo these bolts, we undo them in a circular motion around so that it releases in a nice level fashion. And this should just come apart. You can see here there's a seal and you have to be very careful you pull this off nice and gently like that. And there's one of the crankcase bearings that the crankshaft runs on. And there of course is our gasket there all around here. And again we have these little locating valves. And we just need to make sure that if they're loose we bag them and tag them. In fact, I'm going to do that anyway. And you never want to forget to put these on. So, into the bags we go. Now when a piston's at the top of its travel as far as it'll go, it's called top dead center. And it's very important that we know true top, top dead center. Now when we put camshafts, this is a camshaft behind here in cars, we use what's called degree wheel to make sure we get true top dead center. Now, it can be, as the piston comes up, the rod can be a few degrees either side of true top dead center, so we've got to make sure that's all right. Now, on here, there's a small dot here on the crank, a small dot on the cam, and those two need to line up. There's actually a little bit of float there. There's a step there, and as we pull the camshaft up, whoops, so it's flush, that needs to be in line with that, and the two center axes of these two shafts. So if you get a ruler or a straight edge and run it along, and look sort of down across it, you should see them all in line. Now, pulling it apart's no issue, but putting it back together is. And so we need to make sure we're dead correct with where it goes, because otherwise the timing of when the valves are opening and closing is incorrect. Now this is a camshaft. As you can see, it's got two eccentrics on it, and it's most important this is kept clean and dry. So we're going to wrap that in newspaper and then bag it. And we need to keep that very safe and very clean. Of course, alongside that, we also have the two cam followers that run across those lobes. And they're just situated here inside the crankcase. And we just pull them out. They pull out nice and easily. And they're the things that the cam pushes up and down, which pushes the, uh, the push rods and opens and closes your valves. So we'll just pull those out and store them in this bag separate from one another so they don't come into contact and they don't get scratched. So what we have left now is what's called the rotating assembly. So that's just basically, it's not turning as easy as it would because there's no bearing supporting the side, but you get some idea of how it all works there. Now it's a good idea to have a good look at how this big end is set up. There's a long protrusion there which has to run this way, it can't run the other way. Now the easiest way of getting this off is with the piston at bottom dead centre or around the bottom dead centre and you can get a spanner in and undo those two nuts. Always use the ring side of it and again if you can squeeze against it like that so you don't slip and cut yourself on the castings because as I said before they are very very sharp. So we can just undo them Always loosen them off with the ring side of the spanner first, not the open end. If you slip you around them off and then you're history. And you can sort of move it around to where you can best access them. And for the angle of the camera, it's really quite difficult from where I am. So I'm just going to get my two forefingers in and just sort of undo them a bit. Alright, so there they are undone. And you can see there's a little split, there's a step in the big end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that off and it's a, a very finely machined surface in there, we need to safeguard that and then we can draw the piston out through the bottom so we can just sort of turn it and then withdraw it through the top, you need to withdraw it through there so we can put it in the centre and out she pops there's the piston there now there are tools for taking these rings off correctly I'm going to do it the incorrect way um, 
I'm quite experienced with it, but I don't recommend you do this. There's a proper ring expander tool. There's the top ring. A few things I want to talk about with these is the rings are all different. This top ring is like a molly sort of um, finish on it. The second ring is just a basic cast ring and it's black in appearance. Now, when they get, when they get put back on, there's a specific order to put them on. And I'll go through that in a moment. I'll take the oil ring off. The oil rings are three piece. There's the first scraper ring, the second scraper ring, and that zigzag stuff in the middle is the expander that keeps these two rings, you know, the correct distance apart so they can seal and um, prevent, um, so they can seal correctly against the bore. So we wind the first one off. And my eyesight is rubbish, so I'm looking for the bottom groove. And then, of course, we have the expander. And the expander just literally sits there. It's got coloured ends on it, so you can find the end, which is here, between the red and the green. And that'll just pop out. There. And so that's your basic piston assembly. So... That is as much of the crank as we're going to disassemble. Mr. Platt and I have discussed this and we don't see much of value um, in undoing this nut here. You can undo that nut, it's reasonably easy to get off. All that will come off is this little starter bell here and the fan, the plastic fan. There's a tapered shaft with a keyway or a woodruff key like we saw on the, on the clutch side and then that will withdraw but there's nothing behind there that's serviceable. What would probably be beneficial is taking the crank out and measuring the journal. And there are some measuring tools we have at the, at the school. I'm on holiday at the moment, so I'm working out of my garage. But that's it there. That's just the basic, um, that's just the basic block with the crank in it. So that concludes the disassembly of our Honda four-stroke horizontal shaft engine. Don't forget after every lesson we have to account for everything. We wipe down every tool and put it away correctly. This video will be divided up into small chapters that you can view along the way as you do your work. Now this engine, I should have mentioned before, is without, well I did mention it's without its carburetor and so forth, but it also hasn't got the fuel tank on, and we'll, we'll revisit that uh, when we start next term. See you later.